Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Claudia. Uh, I'm the founder at Banyan. We bring data onto Filecoin, and on the side, I do research for fun. Um, this is a project from August 22 uh, that I did on the side after work. Uh, I think it should probably be shared with the community because I've not really seen any correctly done incentives for Saturn yet. Um, we know incentivized retrievals are problematic on both Filecoin and IPFS. Everyone in this room knows about that. Um, this talk is going to be a state of how things are right now um, and my vision for like how we could build decentralized retrievals as a service. So to be clear, this is not, you know, you pay a miner and retrieve your data. This is like how do you do it at CDN speed completely trustlessly. Um, yeah, so this is going to be kind of vague. There's going to be a lot of like now draw the rest of the owl, like call block science. This needs to be modeled or like we need to like implement this. Um, but yeah, here we go. So. Problem description. Um, what is a CDN? Um, people want their data quickly. I talk to potential Filecoin users a lot at my company. People really want speed. We all know this. Um, data is all over the planet. We need to get it to people quickly. Um, and durability under attempted censorship by dishonest nodes is very important. Also, getting the data and keeping the data closer to the person who actually wants it is important. Incentivizing this is hard. Um, OK, there's context. Uh, I'm going to be using Alice for the users at the edge, both uploaders and downloaders. Charlie is the message passers in the middle, incentivizing them trustlessly, uh, even though they may want to censor you, is also important. Um, figuring out how the market is going to incentivize them to warehouse data adaptively to serve it repeatedly. So you know, like a person in New York uh, should probably keep a copy of the really popular YouTube video that came from Europe. Um, and then Bobs are holding the data, and they may be decentralized, like IPFS. Um, yeah, so the places where I have little angels are people who have, you know, real incentives to get the right data uh, to each other. The devils are people who may be censoring, and everyone is a rational, greedy actor here. Um, so they'll save money if they can, and they will try to get as much money as they can out of the counterparty as well. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically like who's censoring and who we need to protect against censorship. OK, cool. So this is a problem different than anything we've said before. So Magic's response to my talk earlier was, that's provably impossible. And I'm like, yeah. Um, so uh, most consensus systems require that, like they just assume that message passing is done. And you know some people are going to lie, but some people are honest. Well, here you have the problem of you've got like a point-to-point -point interaction where it's just like two guys interacting. And we need to reflect somehow in the global consensus um, that this interaction happens. So you've got the Byzantine generals, you know nothing globally except what's broadcasted, and you know there's no incentives at all. Um, Bitcoin, we add the incentives. There's a last step incentivization, which is the gas fee. So you have an incentive if you can get it to the miner for the miner to put it on chain. And then from there, we just assume that everyone's going to gossip. And you know, with some light correctness assumptions, you'll eventually get the right state. Um, Cloudflares and ISPs. Uh, it's a legal contract, and then also some reputational stuff. You know, if Cloudflare starts censoring you and you're worried about that, you might switch ISPs, or you might switch uh, CDN or ISP. Um, censorship, you know, for, for the majority case, you're not out of luck, but for the very small minority case, uh, there's really not much you can do about this. Um, IPFS is volunteer based uh, with a couple of like, you know, Cloudflare style SLA, SLAs. Look at Pinata. And then right now, we've got Filecoin, Saya's, and Arweave's right now. Saya does some in band incentives that I'm going to talk about on here. Uh, Arweave does this thing called PIIA, which is like the miners are just going to enforce each other, we promise. Um, and they put an equation on that. And yeah, and then Filecoin is like, you know, we call them up, uh, we pay them, maybe in Filecoin, maybe out of band, and then uh, they send us the data. So none of these are really like, incentivizing speed except for Cloudflare where it's properly in the SLA. But yeah, that's that's trusted and uh, can be censored. So yeah, like I said, there's tension. Um, there's, you know, you need this like reflection in the public state, which is the money transfer of I want to pay you for giving me the data. Um, but also we have this private thing where if we have the tension of we're forwarding the packets to another party, um, that kind of destroys the value of the good in the first place. So, like, you know, sending it to a third party who's going to referee the transmission, that just doesn't work at CDN speed. So, that's a non starter. Um, so, how do we prove this very, like, he said, she said situation of, like, 
well, I say that you didn't send me the data and now I don't have to pay. So that's, yeah, problematic um, because everyone needs to agree on how much money everyone got at the end of the process. Um, yeah, everyone's incentivized to lie. Seems like a mess. Um, yeah, so let's look at some prior work that we're going to ground things on. Um, this is not exactly you know, totally relevant to what we're doing, but it's an important prior step. So that's gonna be BOW and WireGuard. So BOW, verified streaming, we have this long, big file, and each packet that you give me, I can verify in band that that particular packet is correct. Very cool, six to seven percent overhead in terms of like the transmission. Uh, if you do the thing that Rudiger did, um, where you kind of prune the lower layers of the Merkle tree, you can get much below six to seven percent. So that's really, really nice. That means for things like video streaming, um, we can actually trust that the server is sending us the right packet as they send us the packet, even for quite big files. So this is good for big files and for video, um, and it's quite it's quite quick. Um, and then WireGuard uh, and BTC Lightning Transport, which also uses the noise protocol strapped on top of a state channel. Um, so we have this PKI identified peer. Uh, we ensure that nobody tampers with the content along the way, so the Charlies can drop everything that we send, but they can't mess with it. Um, and the timer system of WireGuard where you renegotiate the handshake um, for your encryption keys is a great place to insert the code for a state channel, which is going to be a big part of my proposed solution. Um, so you can just kind of strap payments in band on the transport layer, which we're gonna get to it. Um, so those are two things that I'm gonna talk about um, as we keep going. So more prior work. Uh, retrieval pinning is something that came out last year from CryptoNet Lab. Um, let me just get into the description. Sorry for all the memes. They make it more fun for me to make my slides. Um, so yeah, let me look at, okay. Um, so retrieval pinning is this kind of complex protocol where you have this pool of referees who are more or less policing uh, whether Bob is sending the file. So this is absolutely not CDN speed. It just makes sure that the file is available at all within a reasonable period of time. So what basically happens is we have Bob collateralizes similar to a Filecoin deal. Um, Alec, like, so that's the start. Bob and Alice agree on a set of moderators for their interaction, which is more or less the SLA of the file will be retrievable. Um, if Bob is not sending the file, Alice petitions the referees. They get the file from Bob or slash him. The way that you trust the referees is complicated and lots of overhead. Uh, they validate it and then they forward it to Alice. So this is out of band. This is not CDN speed. This will never work, you know, to like get your TikTok videos at the speed of dopamine, but it will make sure that you do get them. So you never, you don't have a data hostage situation anymore the way that you kind of do sometimes with Filecoin right now. Um, very cool protocol. I'm going to use it as a primitive in the solution that I'm gonna come up with at the end. Um, okay, yeah, so it's slow. You have to send it to a middleman, so that's at minimum to RTT uh, without, without all of the validation that they have to do between the middlemen. So they actually like take the file, get it from Bob, and then send it to each other, and then one of them sends it out to Alice. Um, I think that they could do proofs, like the referees could probably do some proofs that I'm not gonna get into to agree upon, you know, whether the file was retrieved and like it doesn't need to be replicated so many times. But anyway, um, the fact that you have to send it twice is really not good at scale or at speed. Um, Bob needs to collateralize. Uh, Filecoin miners are not onboarding data right now because uh, they have such high collateral needs. It makes it really, really hard to onboard. Um, and the collateral that you need for this protocol according to CryptoNet Lab simulations are very, very high. There's some other things that weren't simulated. Um, Alice has to pay middlemen, they have to run servers, there's a whole thing, are these, are these people gonna make enough money to make it make sense to run this protocol? Um, there's other problems too about like, you know, just practicality of this, but it's a great start. It, you know, is decentralized and it makes sure that retrievals happen without, you know, having an army of bots that are just pinging the Filecoin miners, like, is it up, is it up, is it up, which is what a lot of the solutions that I'm seeing right now are looking like. So yeah, um, I, I like it, but it's not a CDN. Um, so this gets a little better. This is where you have payment drips. Uh, 
this is like a class of solutions where I do a little work, you do a little payment. We do that over and over again. And I have a picture of Friedrich Hayek there um, because it's local knowledge about what just happened to me. It's, I just got a packet. Okay, I'm going to pay. And it's applied into the market. Um, there's no outside shared authority. There's no friction. There's not a lot of communication needs. So let's get into that because that's been implemented in Skynet on Saya. Um, so I independently came up with this, and then one of my angels for my company is actually the Skynet founder, uh, and we called about it and went, OMG, we have the same thing, so it was cool. Um, so yeah, the, it's in-band incentives over a payment channel that is right next to the transport layer. So I send you a packet, you send me a payment, we iterate this and iterate this and iterate this, you get paid. I forget how I was using you and me, but the server gets paid, the client gets their file. Um, so there's not a lot of trust at any point. Like the only, the the much the most like trust that I'm giving you is you know a couple cents. The most trust that you're giving me is a few packets. So it's not like we're doing a lot of work for each other without trust. Uh, and there's no outside authority. Um, yeah, we pay the host directly. There's no need for like extra RTTs um, to wait because you can just like fire off that packet while you're still receiving other data. It can be in another thread. It's quite fast. Um, yeah, so why isn't this great? The middlemen are not being paid for this unless you are doing a situation where there is a paid connection from the origin to a Charlie and then from a Charlie to the Alice. Um, and that, you know, kind of that, that, that could work, um, but there are like a lot more router hops usually that are not like caching or keeping the file and you don't really want to establish that many like peer to peer channels. So eh, I don't know, uh, that needs some more work. Um, yeah, there's a lot of elliptic curve signatures because you're like sending a message that is a spend. Uh, elliptic curve signatures in case you don't know are slow. Um, not network speed, not good. Um, it's not programmable. You can't give your money to someone else to have them download on your behalf, and it's not protocol layer. It's it has to happen in this like SIA binary. So it's not like it really only works for SIA. So it's 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 a really good start though. Um, and I link to two little spots in the massive Skynet code base where you can check out where they're doing this. There's a lot more code surrounding this, but um, you can kind of get oriented. It's I don't know. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so now, done with prior work. Here are things that I have done. Um, this is like my little, you know, kind of fuzzy research from August. So uh, you can improve Skynet um, by making the state channel better. Um, you set up the state channel. You post a commitment to, hey, there are some values that I can send. And when you present one of them, you get, I don't know, like 1% of the prize pool that's the full value of the state channel. Um, so I post that commitment, so maybe it's like a keyed RNG output, um, don't worry about what that is. Let's just say, I post some math. If you solve the puzzle, each of the 1,000 solutions to the puzzle will give you one penny, and we can validate that on chain. Um, with the client acts, so when I, you know, act a transaction in like TCP, um, I will add one of these little bits of information that you can prove is a correct solution to the puzzle and get back out your, um, you know, get, get a few pennies. So yeah, the server will just prove that to close out the channel um, and then they can claim however many packets I sent them little receipts for. Um, Magmo is already building state channels on FEVM, which is cool. Um, and Bitcoin Lightning payment channels already integrate with noise, which is, you know, WireGuard, that's the, uh, transport layer that I'm suggesting that we should use later on. Um, yeah, so you can also, yeah, you can ramp up over, you can build trust over time with this, which is cool. Um, we can start by having you pay me one packet, I pay you one penny, and we can, you know, as we keep on with the connection, we can have you give me five packets, uh, I give you five cents. Um, that will reduce overhead for UDP-based protocols where you don't already have the ACK. For the TCP ACK, you can just kind of append this, you know, little check some monopoly money to the end, and it comes for not free, but like a couple of bytes, which is not so bad. Um, that's just a thought. That's something that someone would have to model, not me. Um, weird new topologies of Skynet incentives. You could do an onion routing thing where you append, you know, a whole bunch of hashes that are claimable by intermediaries. I don't know how you would prove that each person only took one. 
Um, but this would mean that you can pay people who are message passing, but not necessarily caching and originating the entire file without them having to establish a payment channel. I think this is something that requires someone else thinking about it, not me. Um, but another interesting one is maybe when like Netflix initiates a connection with you, it comes from their server and they also give you like a little ticket to say you're allowed to download this from someone else um, and we'll pay for your bandwidth. Um, the payment channel kind of allows that delegation, obviously like checking to see who or what they're paying for, you know, who they're paying is easy to enforce on chain. What they're paying for gets you back to that same, like we can't validate what just happened point to point. So I could ask for bunnies.jpg and you want to subsidize me getting bunnies.jpg, but actually I get cats.jpg from the same person and there's nothing you can do about that. So if you didn't want that to happen, that's, you know, a you problem. Um, you could also uh, do this with the permissioning to download content from a third party. So like the, the JWT for, getting bunnies or cats.jpg could come with this like download coupons or bandwidth. I don't know, could be a nice workflow. This is all very like vague. The past two slides have been, um, yeah. Obviously that's also kind of gameable. So yeah, I don't know, requires more work. Anyway, so modeling. Um, in-band incentives look like a generalized multi-arm bandit problem. Um, if you're not an econ person, this isn't targeted at you. Um, and it's also iterated prisoner's dilemma. And the reason that that is, is like the shape of this problem is Bob has a lot of clients that it could serve data to, fixed bandwidth, it wants to make as much money as possible. Switching clients has a bit of a warm-up cost uh, for many networking reasons and also for establishing trust reasons, like is this person just not going to pay me? Um, and it can stop serving and betray the trust at any point. Alice kind of has the same problem, except she has, you know, on her end, an incentive to actually get the data. So she actually cares. So that's kind of the thing that's like backstopping all the movement on this market. Um, but what's really cool about this is it naturally incentivizes replication for data that is in high demand. Um, it, Alice wants her data as quickly as possible. If I'm a server in New York, um, and right now she's, I'm seeing her go through my node trying to pull a video from Europe, I can say, okay, I'm gonna download a copy of that and just serve it to her for me and then she'll pay me more than she would pay Europe or pay me the same amount because she can have lower latencies. Um, yeah, so that's cool. Um, there's a problem with this. <laughs> The like Alice's are unlikely to start a cartel because as I mentioned on the last slide, Alice's have this real demand for the data. Like I actually want my data. Um, I want it for as cheap as possible, but I really do want to see, you know, like my friend's vacation pictures. Um, and I don't really have any leverage over Alice because, you know, if Bob has a lot of data, he has a lot of opportunities to profit. So if I'm being silly on my end, he's just going to cut the connection and go work with someone who will actually pay him. Um, if Bob is like not decentralized enough though, like if he, if there are only like one or two copies of this file on the entire network, um, there is no competition for prices and Bob will just kind of raise the rent to infinity on Alice's data, refuse to serve to Alice, refuse to serve to anyone trying to make a replica. Um, if you just take Skynet, like the in-band incentives that I talked about and mix them with Filecoin storage incentives, this is still a problem. So, I mean, Bob is, he's forced to keep it. Um, he's forced to, or he has this like, you know, carrot, like market to serve it, but he doesn't have any stick saying you can't just hold on to it and say it costs $100 per packet. Um, but we can fix this by gluing everything together. I'm sorry in advance for this slide. <laughs> um, so to fix this, uh, you have storage incentives to make sure that they're keeping the data with collateral slashing. You have retrieve style, you have to make this retrievable. And that's especially important for rare files that are not um, not frequently retrieved, so it's not like a huge profit for me to keep this hot, but you know, if you want me to keep the file hot, pay me to do so, and pay me enough that it's worth it for me to collateralize. Um, and then add the Skynet style thing to induce competition across you know, all of the SPs participating in the CDN. I mentioned Saturn here. Saturn should use this in a couple of years. Um, and then that means that the file is kept at multiple collateralized locations. Some people are directly collateral slashing and forced responsible for serving it, and it's accessible quickly if people are willing to pay for it to be accessible quickly because everyone is competing for client bandwidth payments. Um, the market will pull new geolocalized geo points of presence, replications, uh, you know, from the ether, from the incentives. Um, and then back to that slide at the start, add bow. So this is, you know, add or just below the application layer for streaming applications, or if you're sending large files, you should be validating it as you go. Um, perhaps 
I, I don't really know if application layer is necessarily right because you need to like not pay them if they're sending you junk data. Um, so I'm not really sure where in the stack that should go. Yeah, so I said application layer, but yeah, I'm not convinced. Um, Inband incentives to WireGuard. The, the WireGuard has every five minutes, they renegotiate the you know keys and the handshake. So that's a perfect place to stick a state channel because you're doing that expensive uh, blockchain transaction eventually uh, for the closeout um, for the and for the creation, yeah, actually. Um, that And you have to do a whole bunch of elliptic curve stuff, so that should be in the thread with the state channel creation, um, and then in band with the rest of the protocol where you're just like fast path, sending packet, sending packet, sending packet. All you have to do is like spin off one of these hashes and send it you know, in an extra UDP packet or append it to a TCP ACK. Um, yeah, so UDP, you'd have to add extra control messages. TCP, you just stick stuff on the end of the ACK, and it's pretty cheap. It's like you know, the establishment commitment uh, is, yeah, I mean, you could like standardize it and like ZK, I'd like just stick that in a ZK proof that all of these things are members in the um, payable set of monopoly monies. Um, yeah, so the TLDR of this solution is you need a backstop to prevent like the bad case where you have the hostage situation and then you need competition as gasoline to actually get it fast. So the combination of them where you have retrieve that says, minimum quality of service, you have to at least do this, even if the market is not in your favor, to make sure that you don't have the catastrophic case of mom's vacation pictures are lost, um, is important, that's the stick. The carrot is a market, gotta go fast. Um, so that's really nice, it's like, you know, the common, it's kind of like the US legal system, it's like, you know, most of the time we're adults and we can work out our problems together, but then when there's a big problem, government steps in, and it's slow and it's miserable, but there is justice. So yeah, layering incentives across potentially not the same sets of SPs allows for strong performance in all cases. You don't have the catastrophic case, you have speed when people are willing to pay for speed. Um, yeah, it resolves that tension from the first slide, and then you win, and you're very happy, um, and you have a CDN. So yeah, uh, I you know I wanted to cover uh, upload very very quickly. Um, yeah, so upload like the carrot where you're trying to get speed is the same. Like you just use the same protocol. The like backstop to prevent the catastrophic case. You just have Bob post like a Filecoin deal or a retrieve deal or some kind of like contractual SLA looking commitment uh, to make sure that he's going to start publicly proving that he got the deal or he's gonna get slashed. So now he wants the deal and now we just do you know the transfer Skynet style protocol. Um, it might be, Alice might upload it for free, she might subsidize the bandwidth, who knows. Um, but yeah, you can, you can incentivize the initial storage contractual replications by just you know doing Filecoin replication deals, we all know how to do that. Um, Cool, these were some cool vague thoughts. What's next? Um, I'd love to hear criticism in the comments section. Uh, if like you have criticism of like the vague ideas here, love to hear it. Um, but concretely, if we wanted to move on these kinds of ideas, um, there is a lot lacking here. This was a very vague talk. I did this in about a week in last August and drew up these slides in one week. So yeah, um, two great starting points for work on this if anyone has like the budget to hire like a smart older undergrad intern or like maybe a grad student in like distributed systems or mechanism design. Um, the tit for tat incentive layer, like the Skynet style incentives, modeling that with CAD CAD strapped onto Nikola's retrieve protocol, possibly model Filecoin as well. Think about realistic bandwidth costs, replication costs, costs of capital, um, different demand flows across different continents. This would be a pretty involved model, but it would be very good to have and good to see what prices could start looking like under different assumptions. Um, so that's thing one. Retrieve already has some modeling in it in their uh, like light paper, um, which is great, and everyone in the room should read it. It's pretty cool. Um, the other thing that would be cool is like a test implementation of strapping like the hash-based monopoly money straight channel onto. Did I say straight channel? State channel. Um, onto an existing wire guard or maybe noise quick. I don't know. Martin was like, noise quick doesn't work that way. I'm only familiar with wire guard, so I don't know. Um, but seeing how fast you can get this thing going would be cool um, under different like block time and blockchain congestion assumptions for the payments. Like how much can you do out of band? How much can you defer till later? Um, WireGuard has this nice timer system that I talked about for the transport channel renegotiation. 
um, and it already has like an extra thread for handling the expense of elliptic curve ops. So I think that it's a really good code base to try adding this into. It's also already in the Linux kernel. It goes very fast. Um, but yeah, like just seeing, is this implementable? How bad does it bog down the networking? Could it actually be used in prod? Um, yeah, it would be a cool research internship project if anyone here is interested in pursuing this. In my opinion, those are the next steps. Okay, that was my talk. That was less anxiety inducing than I thought. Anyway, if you have questions. <laughs> Anyone? Am I scot free? Oh, Alex. Um, so for oh, hang on. Right here. Uh, for these state cha channel payments, I might not totally understand. Um, is there a mitigation to somebody just being like, oh, give me, a, let me request a file at different offsets from like 100 different peers? And, and then, then never pay? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would be really, really expensive on their end. You can't really stop. Uh, start of connection attacks, depending on who's like, so every time that you make a payment, you're basically like, put it, it's a little trust, you know? Like we're, we're taking out a little loan and you're gonna pay it back. We're taking out a little loan and you're gonna pay it back. Um, so at the start, when there's no continued like iterated, or when there's, you know, nothing yet, uh, no trust yet, that's a dangerous time. And at the end of the connection is also a very dangerous time because we could just be like, oh, like, I don't have to trust you to send five more packets. I'm just not gonna send the rest. But like really the amount of like loans in these connections is like very, very small. Theoretically, you could get it for free. Like if you just initiate a jillion connections with a bunch of different people. But yeah, that's like very expensive and it's not that weighty an attack on the service providers because it's gonna be so cheap anyway. Like it's like nearly free. So like, yes, you can do that. It would be super slow and it would be like a mosquito bite level of bad for the network um, is basically, yeah. Yeah, so. so you'd probably already have protection in place for something like that. Well, there, you don't even, I mean, you need to see what the model would say, but I don't think there even needs to be protection for that because the, the if you're doing it to the start of connection, the SPs would shut things down pretty quickly when they realize that you're not paying and it would be like minimal overhead. Um, and then if you're doing it at the end of the connection where someone just stops paying or someone just stops sending packets. I mean, I was texting with an economist friend about this and we were both just like, yeah, people would just post on Reddit, like don't connect to this peer, you should blacklist them in your router because they just truncate the file six bytes or six packets before it's over. Like that's like, just don't use them. And it would be pretty, uh, like, I don't know. Like people just wouldn't do that because there'd be out of band reputational mechanisms for that. Um, but you could also just initiate a new connection with someone else to get specifically the last three packets if a service provider started trying to screw you out of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I had another question, but I forgot it. Am I safe? Am I done? Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, you may have already covered this. Uh, for, okay, so where would you like these solutions to live? Like, I know we talked about, like when we were thinking about this, our referees were chain like oracles. Um, do you, with the developments in FPVM, IPVM, like, like just like generally, where do you think this solution fits into the architecture that we've been talking about for the past week here? Yeah, um, so Saturn, obviously. Um, I think there needs to be work on the lib P2P team um, making this fit into the transport layer because you can't just have one client tool uh, and absolutely one app, like a grand total of one application that uses the CDN thing because this like really benefits from economics of scale. So switching out a transport to a paid transport would be um, really, really good, which is why I think WireGuard is super prime. You could do it in TCP too. Um, I think that that would require a bit more modification and would be a little bit harder to make compatible than WireGuard just because of like the state of the internet and the state of the network. Um, Magmos state channels, I haven't looked into them in detail, but I think that they would be pretty good. The FVM is, yeah, like helpful for this. Like the programmability like could probably be like hard coded um, and just everyone's using basically the same state channel over and over again. But yeah, Bitcoin Lightning does basically exactly this. Um, so it shouldn't be too hard. So basically, yes, the primitives you need are a little bit of protocol work, make it work with Saturn. Um, and 
I guess you'd have to deploy the retrieval pinning network if you want that as a backstop, if you're worried about that, um, like the preventing the data hostage situation, and then, um, yeah, state channels, and that, that should do it in terms of engineering work, but I reiterate, uh, there should be some modeling work first. What, what are the properties that you're trying to get with WireGuard or with a, a noise thing? What, um, um, I mean, so it has like encryption, which is cool, but that's not really relevant. What's really relevant is they've got the code already written to renegotiate a something every five minutes um, and then do very fast, slightly modified like transport on the inside. Do you just need like an in-band? tag after every packet? Is that the um, thing you're doing on your that's transport? That's one or? option. You can append it to the TCP acts, or you can um, just send extra UDP acts that are like, you know, like channel messages, like control messages or something. Um, I just, I'm familiar with the WireGuard code base, and it just really struck me as a good place to put this, um, but that's super flexible and open to other suggestions. But yeah, the properties are just like renegotiate the payment channel, strap it into the protocol, which is already like a weird protocol because using, you know, freak TCP is not going to be a thing that your ISP is super into. I, I guess I'm wondering if you made a parallel like lib P2P stream that was then sort of an out of band. Yeah, that that side would thing of tags getting sent where they're not necessarily guaranteed to be exactly interleaved in the same way because there's some potential remixing. Yeah. Is that problematic? Does it need to be really strictly against bytes or So I don't I don't see an immediate problem with that. Um, I want to think about it more before I give a hard answer. I think that having it I don't know. I think that having the connections suffer together when you're doing an incentive mechanism, if the connection's suffering, is probably kind of smart because it's like, oh, I haven't gotten any pa payments, but I also haven't gotten any packets. Um, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't think that the the act should be ordered if you're doing like a UDP protocol. Like, obviously, you should not put ordering where there is not ordering. Um, so. That, that shouldn't matter for like a UDP. It might matter for a TCP where you were trying to have stricter guarantees, but again, I think that this protocol is gonna be very fast, everything's gonna be very fuzzy in terms of when you're getting the acts. If you want to keep the, the amount of data that you pay for and you, that you haven't received yet um, as small as possible, which I assume you wanna do, it would make sense to integrate this with the transport and basically give the peer a um, only pay for the next congestion window of, of data, or then to account for pack, uh, packet loss, maybe two congestion windows of data. So I agree. May, 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 maybe just do it as a quick frame. Yeah, I agree. I just, I think it's going to be really problematic for adoption if people are like, oh, I didn't get my payment in time, I'm gonna kill it really, really fast. Like, I think people should be reluctant to kill the connection for non-payment is probably the correct behavior, but again, we need modeling work to like properly know. Like, I think it should be very not strict. Like, you should have to get pretty in debt before, like once you've really established the connection, you've been like paying, okay, you should have to get pretty in debt before the service provider cuts you off. Um, is just my instinct about usability. I have absolutely nothing to back this up. So, yeah. Um, Anything else? Cool. Thank you guys for listening.